Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to my channel. The channel will be all about stainless steel fabrication. And uh, to start off with, we will fabricate, we will uh, design a stainless steel sink 1500 by 600. It's a sink. So to begin with, let us open SolidWorks. I'm using SolidWorks 2019. I will show you a few tricks here and there. It's going to be a single draw, a simple drawing. I hope you enjoy it. So when you open your SolidWorks, you got file, new project, part. Okay. My template is set at default metric system, so I'm using millimeters. Let me open the top view. The top view is that new sketch. You go to center point rectangle from the origin, smart dimension. This is 1500. Okay, by six hundred. Okay, this is the overall dimension of the sink, so we will use it to snap into the ends. So I will exit the sketch, go to 3D view, go to top plane again reference geometry plane we offset it at say 50 millimeter but whatever works for you then now you will have uh, the the internal measurements of the sink before the bending so from the plane we'll do a sketch normal center rectangle don't snap it at the center because we will be doing some dimension basing on the overall dimension of the sink so just click somewhere do not let the triangle the rectangle snap on either of the previous rectangle sides so we dimension this uh, what will happen is a bit, uh, at the first bending line to the outer there will be uh, a difference of 44 millimeter it is something that is predetermined so this side we dimension from that line to the previous sketch we put 40 millimeter 44 millimeter actually it is something that I have calculated same applies to sorry about that this line to this line 44 44 sorry 44 millimeter this line to the front also 44 and at the back because the sink will have an upstand of 50 millimeter and a small bend of 15 millimeter so here you will have a dimension different from the other so this we can give it 15 millimeter okay and you go to sheet metal base flange and uh, many a times most of the time we normally use a stainless steel three or four 1.5 millimeter thick so this uh, sheet parameters we give it 15 1.5 millimeter the others bend allowance relief these are defaults from solidworks so click ok and there you have your base flange now you can go ahead and hide this plane now we will start with the with edge flange at the back at the upstand so at the upstand here you click on this edge the, uh, you give it a blind of 50 the upstand will be of 50 millimeter click ok There we have it, our hub stand is there. Now, if you look at uh, uh, 
at our base flange and the edge of the overall dimension there is a 50 15 millimeter remember we that we dimension dimensioned the drawing the inside uh, base flange we have 15 millimeter because happier there will be an edge uh, an edge flange which is a band of 15 millimeter which will be going against the wall but we are not going to first do that because we need and from when you look at this side the bending will come up to this side so our edge flange is not to this side and to, it will give us all sorts of problems if we do bending from this side before we work out on this side so what we are going to do is we will take we will take the front plane we'll create a plane here so that we may create a tab to extend this uh, upstand all the way up to the edge of the overall dimension the, the sketch of the overall dimension so we are going to create a reference geometry which is a plane basing it on the front plane and uh, snap it to this edge because the bending of the sides will start from here going all the way around one second going all the way around to this point there will always be a gap here between the upstand and the other bends which will do some welding therefore we we create a reference geometry and snap it at this point feature reference geometry plane and click on this edge there you go our plane is set click ok now click on the plane and start a new sketch then create a corner rectangle put it there no that is wrong that is wrong my friends We're doing it the wrong way actually that should be the sketch for the mitre joint so I will cancel the sketch hide this geometry the reference geometry I will use it a little bit later I want to create a, a base flange here which will be merged to this Lunch yeah therefore let me create tab sheet metal tab to that face then corner rectangle I will snap it there you can click it anywhere we're going to give it some properties and also to the other side rectangle yeah, we click OK. Now you take this top line, shift this line, shift this edge, and give it a collinear relationship. You can see the rectangles have snapped at the top of the upstand click ok then you take this point of the rectangle shift this point of the previous overall sketch make it vertical see the rectangle has, uh, has not at the overall size of the sink the same applies to the other side this and this create a vertical relationship now you're good now when you look at the rectangle it is on the front or the very front of the upstand so you click ok and you click ok to the sketch and the, it will create a flange which has extended past the, the horizontal surface of the sink 
then you make sure the result is matched so that you may have when you create a, a flat surface you may have the bend extend into this side click ok see it's one unit it's one continuous unit <sighs> there we go now we are going to create the other bends for this side so we go to our plane sketch and take a line uh, it will be at some angle 45 degree we are going to define it okay now smart dimension this is predetermined 20 millimeter this is 30 mil this is 50 mil and this is 15 millimeter 15 millimeter Actual, actually for the sake of accuracy we don't need to do this we can delete this dimension then again you take this horizontal vertical relationship horizontal relationship now the sketch is not fully defined so we take this point and the overall dimension and create a vertical relationship this bend will automatically become 30 millimeter but again the sink will be exactly want the sink to be exactly 15 millimeter the, uh, 1500 millimeter overall length of the sink one more relationship we have not defined it is this angle should be 45 degree or you can even do 30 30 so this becomes 150 degree there we go uh, that is done we go to sheet metal and we go to mitre mitre flange Click ok see you have created a bend there we want the bend to go all the way around click on that edge click on this other edge and take a look at the, uh, the parameters you have to trim the edges trim the sides of the bands so that the bands at this point they might not overlap one another they have a gap going all through then you can reduce the gap to 0 0.1 millimeter now that looks good click ok and you have your mitered band and our sink looks ok now we go to the initial step, uh, sketch and hide it. 3D. And you go to sheet metal and do a flat pattern. There you go. So the welding will be here. The gap is good enough for welding. If you do the bending, the sink will. There will be a very small gap for the purposes of welding. You see, once you do the bending here, it is always difficult task to polish especially this area it is not a, an easy task to polish therefore you need to have the, the, the gap being so minimum so that you might not be required to use a lot of filler material when doing the welding we unflatten our sink sorry I hit this sketch before I did the last bend so what we're going to do is do an edge flange bend it at 90 don't worry about the length of the bend just do it at 
up to vertex click ok click on the band edit sketch you want it to be exactly 15 millimeter you can keep the overall size of the sink at 600 so you click this line and this line and make it collinear relationship that the sink won't go past 600 click ok finish editing the sketch of the band now finally you can do your edge flange 15 millimeter the reason why we are doing this 15 or 10 depending on your bending tool 10 millimeter is always ideal why we do this bend is to avoid a sharp edge if uh, the sink is going against the wall so this part will be on the wall and there will be always a nice clean surface here that won't stick between the wall and the sink because there won't be any gap and also for safety purposes nobody can hurt themselves because there is a round what do we call it fillet see so that is very much important for safety purposes and also this bend is achievable when you bend in with your tool and again this depends with the, the bending tool that you're using there is a 15 millimeter gap therefore it won't be a difficult task to do this bend and to do this bend the, uh, the bending experts will tell you that that is nice now our sink top is all set we can hide the sketch there we go now we want to do a cutout for the sink bowl and the bowl will be 500 by 400 by 300 deep and the bowl will be on the we could do, you can do if you're doing a, a double a double ball sink or a single ball the ball can either be at the center it can either be to the left it can either be to the right this depending with your plumbing system uh, or where your water point or the arrangement of your kitchen whichever works for you but for us now we are going to do our, our the bowl will be on the right therefore I have click on the top started a new sketch normal I did it on uh, spacebar to bring up the menu <sighs> therefore we go to center rectangle I really don't want to snap it at the origin therefore I will because I will give it some dimensions there we go the bar will be 500 Okay, 400. Okay, then I want this relationship. This edge to the very edge. I want there to be a 50 millimeter. Let's see, 50 millimeter. That it's sufficient. 50 is not sufficient we can increase it to around 80 millimeter you don't want to leave a huge gap because uh, some people have their plumping system the tap coming from the wall or coming under the sink therefore you will do a hole here for the for the tap therefore you have to ensure that there is not a big gap here and you don't also have to want to have a, a huge gap on the front between the sink and the bowl the sink edge and the bowl so you can do 120 sorry about that yeah that looks fine to me if your tap is coming from here or from from the wall nobody will be straining to use the sink here you can have remember this is 44 from here to the beginning of the to the edge of the sink is 44 mil so you can leave an allowance of 
20 millimeter so 44 plus 20 that gives us 64 we can do a round figure of 65 yeah the bowel moves accordingly you also don't want to have troubles when you are doing the welding you see you will be welding from below here and there is this 15 millimeter bend you don't want your welder to be having troubles doing the welding here so increasing and again you want to have a work surface on this side so you don't want to to leave a very big space here which will basically be a wasted space because there is nothing you can place on this side therefore 65 or we can do 75 that looks that looks fine to me and click ok you uh, you do a fillet of 30 millimeter click on this point click on this point that point and that point okay our fillet is created let us see we will our sink we will have it with the top will come from under the sink and not from the wall so we are going to create a hole for the top you have to snap it at the middle of the bowl there we go we are going to give it some dimension actually it will help us determine whether this 120 space that we left at the center is okay we create a relationship the center of the bowl the center of the top should be vertical now from the from the sink from the edge of the bowl to the center of the top there should be at least 50 millimeter therefore let us first delete this so that we may first dimension our bowl from this to this we need 50 millimeter that's okay then from this center you need a space of say 30 mil the hole for the top standard top is dia 20 so you can do a hole of 21 millimeter so that the top when you are inserting the top it might not destroy the threads you want to have it a little bit loose not a tight fit a little bit loose ah there we go our sink is properly our sketch is all dimensioned and fully defined we can go ahead and make the cutouts so you go to sheet metal, extrude and cut, link the thickness, ok, there you have it, your sink is ready, the hole for the top is ready, the hole for the bowl is ready, here there will be a welding, if I can turn it around a little bit, there is some gap there is some small gap the reason why we we did remember we did a we did a tab initially our upstand was starting from here going all the way so if we had created these other bands there would be a gap let me let me do this don't do this i just want to show you something from this side there will be a gap initially our our hedge flange was of the upstand was starting from here going to the other side to here so if we had left it like that there would have been a gap here
here this whole all this would have been a gap and your sink would look ugly we'll start uh, uh, improvising doing afterthoughts taking some small pieces of uh, shit and uh, by shit i mean i mean don't take it badly i mean shit metal stainless steel piece and do weld in here and it would look ugly actually polishing this side and the, the and the piece of metal that you will had would go all the way up here so you would be running you will be you would be having a welding running all the way and the the, the the thing could look ugly that is why we did that tab very important therefore here there will be a welding which is easy to handle our welding will go through here all the way down to below there same applies to these other points uh, exit the sketch the sketch was just for illustration purposes now there is something I want to a few things a couple of things I want to point out at this point if you do the, the flat pattern well when you are doing the bending do not bend the entire thing at once okay if you do all the bendings you bend you bend uh, this you bend this you bend this and you bend this then uh, and you bend all this and the others it will okay welding will happen but it won't be so neat my recommendation after doing this for a couple of years been in fabrication for what six eight years i've seen it all so the most advisable thing is to do this bend up to here you do this bend this is the 45 bend when i convert this to dxf i will show you exactly what i'm talking about you do this bend and this bend this and this this and this it is along this line and this line this line and that also this that goes all the way around you can do the upstand first don't do the other bends it's okay if you want to do the, the these two bends because there is no welding that will be coming right around this area but you do this bend this this and this then do the welding before you do this bend before you do this bend do the welding here and if possible have it polished it is very easy for you to do the polishing before doing this bending and uh, it will look almost like a top that has been pressed uh, maybe you are in these countries that are very fortunate the developed countries where you have all the tools and machines and equipment to help you do uh, nice works uh, as in our country we are not so privileged so we sometimes we, we not sometimes we are not privileged to have these machines so that does not mean that what we supply to our clients is a substandard uh, item therefore for you to make it neat and also to be competitive in the market some of uh, the big big hotels they import these things from overseas and still you want to get a share of the market you have to give a nice and good quality product therefore if you want to be a little bit competitive of course it cannot uh, the fabricated thing cannot look exactly like a, a pressed thing from the developed countries they have all the equipment therefore for you to be competitive do this bend do this bend do the welding do the polishing then go ahead and finish the other bendings and come up and finish the welding here here and the one below there and you will have a very nice beautiful sink therefore our top is done we can go ahead and save it uh, I had created a folder already on the desktop and I had called it sync. I put part one, one, sync, top, 
save it for those of you who are using CNC cutting this is how you go about it and you want to create a DXF remember CNC machines take DXF uh, files to do the cutting or the cutout and the advantage of having a, uh, a CNC machine is you're going to have a perfect all the cutout here will be perfect the notch in here will be very smart you won't require to use a grinder to do anything it will only be welding once the, the you fit the program on the machine you will have a very beautiful uh, piece of metal that you can go ahead and do painting and welding and no use of grinder so you won't have any grinder marks anywhere apart from the polishing of course so go ahead and save it in a DXF file you can save it under the same folder or if you want you can create a new folder and call, call it DXF then change it here to DXF file DXF click save go ahead and include the band lines click OK give it some time for it to give you to show you a preview of what you want to save there you go you have you, you, your file ready click save now if I go ahead it's a DXF file and uh, only um, how to card accept uh, you can open the file via AutoCAD so go to where you had saved your project that is sync top flat button sync top there you go here is our sync see the the, the 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 gap I was talking about the minimum the, the small the gap the higher the quality of the weld and it is actually highly recommended to ensure that from this point at this point the gap is at, at most three millimeter at most three millimeter and from if you're very well conversant with the autocad you can edit it from here don't worry about the overall size of there you want to take care of the, uh, the gap so that your welding might be in it if you're very smart you can do the editing i'm not going to go to that part i will i just want to check what is there see this gap is very huge the sink when you do the bending the sink won't uh, this side okay this side and this side it won't meet there, there will be a, a very big gap the gap okay it won't be that big but there will be a gap which if you don't have a highly experienced welder it will give them whole sorts of issues with doing the welding so you can edit this from this point this gap you make it small at least three millimeter wide and this side and you're good to go now the other thing is why I, I decided to switch to AutoCAD is that uh, with CNC machine it doesn't distinguish between bending lines and uh, cutting lines and uh, especially when they are touching the border the outer part of the of the sink or of, of the the outer border of the line of course you can give them a different color and uh, if depending on your machine again if your machine is programmed to have these dotted lines which are bent in line actually you give them a, a, a different color say a pink color it will recognize them not as uh, cutting marks but as bending marks but you also are required to give it a gap of say two millimeter uh, let me snap this at all the mode two millimeter I'm just uh, taking a real quick illustration of what you require to do and then you trim this line and the other the other edge like that so here the the the, the bending lines are not touching the outer line therefore it will be easy for the, the CNC uh, cutting lesser machine 
for it to recognize that these are not cut actual cutting lines but bending lines but again you have to give them uh, a different color now what i would rather do other than uh, doing coloring to these lines is instead of offsetting instead of trimming this if i could go back before the trimming what i prefer is instead of trimming that i trim the other side i i trim the longer side i trim between that and this there you go then i delete this line don't want the, the machine to be to get confused which line is which and you don't want to forget a line there and you know once you've programmed the cnc machine and it will see any line it will cut and you will have uh, all sorts of issue with your sink the reason why i did a two millimeter line here is for doing a very small cut two millimeter to show the marking for the bending actually you are doing marking for the bending because it can only mark on one side and not the other side therefore when you, are, you will start wasting a lot of time going back to the to your cutout and start transferring marks to the other side because some bands will be on the opposite side therefore it is advisable to have a smaller cut two millimeter you have set these lines to two millimeter then you trim all these other lines there will be a line of two millimeter two millimeter two millimeter so whether you are bending on one side or the other the mark will still be there so you won't take any time to do marking so you want basically what you're trying to do is to minimize time for production so that there won't be any time for doing the marking and again some cnc machines they don't they remember stainless steel three or four comes in different types and grades there is the hairline the one with the film the pvc film there is another one which is plain and uh, some of the machines have seen some guys do fabrication and when they are doing the cnc cutting they invert the film they invert the film so the bottom the bottom of your sink will be the cutting will be done on the bottom of the sheet metal so what you do if that is the case if you transfer this program direct to to the cnc machine it will cut it as it is and uh, assuming this is your sheet metal it is lying like that and this is what we are seeing actually our, our top is the bottom of the plate so once you go and invert it when doing the painting automatically you wanted a sink with the ball on the right so automatically the sink ball will go to the left because your cutout was done from the bottom so what you do if you have inverted the film you also need to invert this also so the, and the way to do that is really really simple very important be careful about that that is if you're using inverted film cutting from the stainless steel metal so what you need to do is very simple very quick just mirror these like that delete it delete the original one and there you go so your ball will be to the left as you're feeding it on the machine the cutout will be done on the bottom of the sheet to the left and when you are doing the bending when you invert it so that uh, the film comes to the top there the sink automatically will be on the right side don't forget about that i've seen guys waste a lot of material because they forgot a very simple uh, procedure okay there we go now you know let's go back to our our sink we have saved the top part our sink is done now we got part two and part two is really simple is doing the ball remember our ball is 500 by 400 and we want the ball to have a depth of 300 so 
Spotify, 